This is our introduction to the Missouri State University's telecourse for Math 135 College Algebra. And I want you to know that I am your instructor for this telecourse. At least I'm your um, iTunes U instructor. I'm the one that'll be presenting all the lessons. I hope they're not too ho-hum for you. I hope you uh, can enjoy them. But make sure that you work along with me along the way. Now I have just a few things that I thought I'd point out to you here before we get started with it all. One is some technology concerns. You know, because we're all at different um, places in our use of technology and our knowledge of technology. Graphing calculators are awesome tools in general. Right now, they are not allowed um, for exams um, for the on-campus 135 courses. Now, what that means is you might want to make sure you understand when you come in for the original orientation meeting that you understand whether you can or cannot use that graphing calculator. And if you're using a scientific calculator, I strongly urge you to be totally comfortable with that calculator before you walk in to take a test. And of course, you want to make sure that it will be an acceptable model. I may or may not be the person who is teaching the course through the university at the time that you are taking it. Okay? So whoever it is that's actually in charge of the telecourse for that semester will decide what calculator you may use. Now, by the way, that graphing calculator can be a great learning tool as long as you use it appropriately. Another really helpful learning tool is a software that's called Winplot. And I thought I would take just a moment to show you what Winplot looks like. Now for one thing, you can go in here and set up uh, an equation here and you can graph any kind of equation you'd like to do. You can graph implicit, you can graph explicit, parametric, polar. It's pretty amazing what all you can do. Now another feature that I thought was very interesting under the window is guess. Oh, by the way, one of the things I didn't tell you is how do you get Wimplot. It's a totally free, totally easy download. If you simply Google the name Wimplot, or perhaps the other search engines will take you there just as quickly, but find Wimplot and it's a quick and easy download. Wonderful program. You might like this guess, which is under window, because what it does is it will bring up random equations for you to try. And I can even tell it what kind I would like. Within this course, we will be using absolute values, we'll be doing logs, we'll be doing exponentials, we'll be doing rationals. And so I might say, well, let's just try some rationals when you're working on that. And this is really pretty easy. I think it's pretty user friendly. I say, give me a new example. And what it does is it will give me this graph and then I am to determine what the equation of that graph would be. And so I use my knowledge of these graphs to come up with that equation and I can type it in. And so I can say guess and I can put in my guess and it will tell me if I'm right. If I'm really terribly unsure, I can ask it for the answer and it tells me right here what the equation is for that particular graph. This is very powerful and especially as you guys are practicing understanding your graphs. I strongly encourage you to consider looking at Wimplot. I think it'll be really helpful to you. Now, how to succeed. Uh, some of you have been, probably been very successful in your previous math classes and some of you might be terrified at the thought of taking a math course. I would say one thing to keep in mind is that math has its own language. We have our own language uh, both in the terminology that we use and in all the symbols that we use. 
Sometimes you're just afraid of the problem because you may not understand what the symbols are telling you in the problem. So if there's some symbol you don't know or some term you don't know, be sure to ask, okay? Learn the language. Now, math uses problem solving, which I think is one of the best reasons to study math. Yes, it is a very utilitarian tool. You need it in chemistry and in physics and all over the place. Yes, we use math. But I think another huge value is that as a problem solving uh, tool, it's great aerobics for your brain. Now, by the way, Sometimes as you're doing good problem solving, you get stuck. That is totally normal. Don't get frustrated with it. Just kind of stop, take a deep breath. Maybe you want to go and get uh, a pop to drink or go take the dog for a walk or something. You know, take a little bit of a break, come back with a fresh view. Sometimes I've solved problems taking a shower or I wake up in the middle of the night with some new insight. Don't assume that all math problems are solved, boom, immediately. Don't assume that you're a failure if you read a problem and you don't immediately have the answer. Good problems take some pondering, okay? I strongly urge you to set up a support system. And the more afraid you are of this course, the more important this support system is. How do you have support? Well, built within this course, I did put in three addenda. I gave a little bit of explanation about our number system, how all the complex numbers are broken down. I gave you some information about um, solving systems of equations. And I gave you a little bit of a refresher on factoring polynomials. That's to kind of help you catch up with some things that we might just assume that you already know. Now, don't overlook the value of your textbook. For one thing, there are words in there. <laughs> they explain terminology. They work examples. Maybe you want to read it. You pay for it, right? Another thing you want to look is that many of our textbooks these days have some wonderful online sources that go along with that textbook. Don't overlook those options as well. You might just get some great online sources. Besides this course on iTunes U, there might be some others that are helpful to you. We want you to be very successful. Now, if you happen to be close enough to our Springfield campus, and I do not know about our other campuses, but on our Springfield campus, we have what's called Bear Claw. And what that provides for students is lots of free tutoring. You can get some individual tutoring. You can get some group tutoring, kind of drop-in tutoring. It's in our library. So if you feel like, hey, I'm close enough, I can, or I can go up for a day to Springfield, come on by, check out Bear Claw. It might be a great help. Now, maybe you have a tutor close by, maybe a study buddy you can work with, because believe me, communicating with somebody else and working with someone else can be a wonderful um, experience as you guys both kind of keep each other from making mistakes and you kind of talk things out, may be very helpful. And of course, contact your instructor. Your instructor should be very accessible through email, so don't be afraid to let us know what's going on. We can't help you if we don't know what you need from us. And definitely, oh please, 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 please stay on schedule. You know, some students that take a um, telecourse or an online course kind of do it so that they can put it off to the side. You're going to get yourself in trouble, I'm afraid, if you don't stay very close to the schedule that's given to you at your orientation session at the beginning of the semester. Because um, if you let that go, you're going to have so much to cover in such a short period of time, could be really tough. So you might want to make a schedule for yourself and make sure that you sit down on a regular basis. You do the work. Now, how to study for exams. By the way, one other thing I probably should have put down here on how to be successful. Um, I love football. Uh, actually, I love lots of sports. Watching Heinz Ward catch a pass 
go Steelers, <laughs> does not make me an expert um, receiver for the NFL. You watching me do algebra does not make you an expert. The only way you're going to develop your algebra skills is for you to put the pencil to the paper. You are cutting yourself short if you think that you can just watch it and learn it. Anything you want to think, the greatest musicians, the greatest actors, they've all put much work and practice into honing those skills. You must also put practice into honing these skills. Now, to study for exams, because sometimes we get the ideas when I'm going through them, but then when it comes time to take the test, it's a little tougher. Make your own study guide. You know, sometimes we shortcut ourselves. For example, write down just a narrative for yourself. It's just for you. Write down things like, what's the main point? What are we doing here? Okay? We're trying to learn how to graph this kind of an equation. Write down terminology, especially if it gives you grief. Write down any necessary formulas and how it is that you use them. Procedures. Now, I don't want you to get too hung up on procedures, but along with the procedures, because there are some you're going to have to get comfortable with, you want to be paying attention to how do I know that in this situation I should use this procedure? That's something we overlook, okay? And then any potential difficulties, like, oh, be careful about simplifying in this way. Another suggestion for better success on tests is to make a deck of index cards with some sample problems. Now, the reason I thought of this is that as you go through your textbook and you look at the book again, students will tell me, I read the book, I reworked problems. But when you see the problems in section 3.2, you are clued in to what the topics are in section 3.2. And so you're more likely to be successful because you're just following along with those ideas that you see all around those problems. You're better off if you make an index of sample problems, homework problems, problems that I've worked here, problems that you find somewhere else with full solutions. Make a card. On the front, put the problem. On the back, put the answer and where you can find the solution, or the solution if it's short. Now, here's why. As you get ready for the first test, you take this deck of cards. Maybe it's 50 cards. That might be a nice deck. And you shuffle them up. And you pick out a problem. And now you have no other clues around you. You are just you and this problem, OK? And can you tackle that problem? If not, you look on the back, and you use that hint, and you go, and you find the solution. You work it through. Put the card back in the deck. And you keep working through that until you can look at a problem, recognize what you're supposed to do, and then do it. OK? It's an awesome thing. Oh, and one last thing on the deck of cards. Your test one deck of cards. Rubber band them together and set them aside. You've got your test two deck of cards. Rubber band them, set them aside. And when you get to the end of the semester, guess what you should do? Put them all together. OK? Great help to get ready for the final exam, okay? One quick point, uh, it surprises me how many students will come into an exam with a calculator that isn't even theirs. They don't know how to use it. It's like, I can't find the E button. Practice with that calculator. Use the calculator on the homework that you're going to use on the exam. Now, if something just suddenly happens just before the exam, try to buy a calculator like what you had. Yes, there are some very cool features, but those features are no good if you don't know how to use them. Lastly, please keep in touch with your instructor, whether that instructor is me or whether it's someone else in my department, because we really do want you to succeed. I hope you are very successful in this class and that you enjoy the lessons.